Hello, hello there, guys, and welcome back to another live stream here on the Speed Force Racing League YouTube channel. Today, we will be racing around the probably not so sunny Netherlands, as uh, it is indeed the Netherlands and not the Netherlands. I think the Netherlands is a, a part of the Netherlands. Um, but we're going to be racing. Well, hey, wait, the game also is, is wrong, actually. It says Netherlands, why well, it should be the Netherlands. Uh, but I guess that's not too much of a, of, a, of a detail we need to focus on. Today, we will be racing in Division 2. It is going to be Season 15, around 13 of the Dutch Grand Prix here in Zandvoort. Uh, Zandvoort, a very interesting track, I do have to say that. I'm not too sure if, you know, Zandvoort is actually a track I'd like to commentate on. Because usually there's not too many overtaking opportunities around Zandvoort. Uh, which made, which makes it very difficult for me to commentate on because there's not much action on track and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully it'll be a good race. You never know. Uh, it could be a, a very surprising one. Uh, I had someone pop in my DMs earlier. It was Mindful Wasp asking me, who do you think is going to win? Well, he actually asked me, who are you going to root, root, root for? And I said, you know, as a commentator, I need to be neutral, right? I need to be neutral. I need to make sure that I'm not favoring anyone because that could lead into discussions and all that kind of stuff. So... I'm going to say I'm not rooting for anyone. Well, I might be rooting for anyone, obviously for someone, but I'm not telling you. But the, the, the person that, I'm think, uh, that I think is going to get a good chance is... Uh, I was thinking about Mindful Wasp himself, because Sandford here, this track, you know, it's very consistent base, you know. Not many good overtaking opportunities. You need to rely on your consistency, your good qualifying and uh, your pace around the track in general and just have good regular pace and I think Mindful Wasp is definitely one of them who is good with tire management, who is good with, you know, regular speed all over the track, keeping it consistent. Uh, Energy Dan is definitely one up there, the one to look into this season, uh, in the middle of the season. Yo, yo, guys, welcome, guys. Um, in the middle of the season, oh, well, guys and Melissa, of course. I don't know if there's any other person who is not a man in the chat, but... Uh, I guess it is sort of this. Uh, so, um, Energy Dan, he's the one to look into uh, this season because he has actually improved quite a bit, quite well, actually. I think he might be up there uh, with the top guys right now. I think last week he got P3 or P4, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, today, he's definitely looking to do the same as I just I just saw that I'm doing something wrong with the, uh, the limiter. So I'm going to change that real quick. Um, but in the meanwhile... Oh, I totally forgot about Mansell, if I'm being honest. I think Mansell might be up there, too. Um, and then my, my last name was actually uh, Mr. Mr. Cassidy. Cassidy currently in a P11. A and the reason why I'm saying Cassidy is he's, he's kind of got the same drive style as Mindful Wasp. Although I feel like he's got the qualifying pace of Calvin Racing. So he's got the two the two strengths of two drivers in one driver, which is of course the, the qualifying pace of Calvin uh, Racing, and then of course the race consistency of uh, Mindful Wasp. As there is a little bit of traffic here in uh, the last corner, so I think some people will be uh, yielding. Actually, what is the McLaren driver doing? Driving on the racing line? Not too sure who that was. Might have been Prep, as uh, Gawk is still in the pits. But Prep coming around that last corner very, very slowly. And both the Ferrari cars actually had to come to the pits. Uh, what is that Ferrari car looking like? It's looking like not a normal Ferrari car. That looks for, like a very strange Ferrari car. Uh, we've got, once again, the Keeves crew in the comms box. Well, not in the comms box, but in the in the, in the video. Uh, they're wishing Keeves the best of luck again. Melissa is a uh, partner. And then, of course, we've got Joshua who's also rooting for Keeves, of course. Uh, so go Keeves, I'm not a, I'm, I'm neutral, I'm neutral. <laughs> but you know, you've got to keep the, the watchers uh, happy, you know. Mindful Wasp, as I said, you know, Mindful Wasp up there, 1.9.7, he's the second one to come across the line as Keeves is just coming out of the pits. We might want to go on board with someone else. Uh, Oliver, maybe he's in the pits. Uh, Calvin Racing might be up for a good one coming through. Uh, sector 2 at the moment, and Calvin Racing, I don't think he's on the fast one. He saved all of the ERS he's got already. So you might want to have a quick look with the lap data. And Calvin Racing still up there. I think a one, a low 1.9 is definitely the time to look into, as uh, Calvin Racing is just getting overtaken by the Mercedes car. The Mercedes car being a shaggy. And who is the other Mercedes driver? Oh, Tashkern, of course. Uh, we've also got a, a Tashkern and Shaggy fan in the chat being a Jonas. Uh, Tashkern being in the Mercedes car, and then we've got Shaggy, usually also in the Mercedes car. 
I'm not sure where he is at the moment. He is indeed in Mercedes car in P3 at the moment at 110.1. Calvin Racing is going to start his lap and this might be the ideal opportunity for us to look at the track. So turn one, a U turn, a very heavy braking zone, a easy overtake opportunity going down the inside, making a little bit of a dive bump. And we've got turn two, turn three, hard braking zone into turn four, uh, also being a U turn and a banked corner. And then we're heading into a little bit of traffic here. The guys are going off grass quite nicely there, coming into turn five, uh, turn six, and then we've got turn seven being a very fast right hander. And then we've got turn eight. And then we've got turn 9 being a very fast right-hander. Once again, you need to watch out for the corner on the exit. Turn 10, hard braking zone, a 90 degrees corner. And then we're heading into another U-turn being turn 11, if I'm not mistaken. As the guys definitely want to take a very tight line and a good exit coming out of that corner. Then we're heading into sector 3, turn 13 and 14. As Calvin Racing just has to avoid someone there. 13, and then we've got 14. A little bit of a chicane. Uh, but that chicane ends in a U-turn. Then we're going into turn 15 and 16. And 16 is that banker corner again. As you can see here, coming through that part of the track, you really want to have a lot of straight line speed. Coming down the straight, because it's quite a long straight, you will have the DRS. And I think Calvin Racing might be up there with the top guys. A 1.9.5 is the pole for tonight. Uh, well, a provisional pole for tonight. A set up by the Red Bull driver, but his teammate still has to come across the line. Cassidy just started a qualifying lap. Coming through sector one at the moment into sector two. Yo, yo, Adams, how are you doing, buddy? Are you racing? Are you racing? Uh, Alpine? Uh, no, you're not Alpine, you're Williams. Uh, no, you're not Williams. Adams, aren't you racing, buddy? I thought you were racing. Or are you division one? That might be it. That might be it. Cassidy doesn't seem to be very fast at the moment. Yeah, you got promoted during the first part of the of the season. I think you were in the Williams. And then MCFC stole your seat. I mean, stole. He got given the seat. Uh, and he's actually trying to work his way up the field. He's doing pretty well. He's pretty well lately. I do have to say that. Oh, yeah, you're Div 1. You got promoted, right? If I'm not mistaken, you were in Div 2 at some point during last season or this season, if I'm not mistaken. Cassidy coming around the last corner. It'll not be a pro... Uh, uh, oh, loses the car, almost spins into the wall. Kind of... Uh, well, took control of his car again and he comes back into the pits. It, would have, it wouldn't have been a nice lap, if I'm being honest. I think it would have been a 110 or 111, maybe. Keeves coming across the line to put a 19.4. And as we're getting further into the qualifying session, we're slowly taking some time off those quali of those uh, pole times currently we're at uh, 19.4 while we started to qualifying with a 19.9 from mindful west if i'm not mistaken currently still has a 19.7 or it might have been that 19.7 i'm not sure but a surprising result here prep coming into the pits has got a 19.7 so he's actually up there with the top guys at the moment and people who I didn't think were i mean who I thought were going to be up there aren't currently up there uh, including energy dan currently coming through sector one heading into sector two and you know what the thing is with Zanford it's a really 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 fast track you really need to be um, consistent and why I'm saying that is Zanford is a track with not many overtaking opportunities but so many corners to make mistakes heading into sector two you've got that fast right hander which is going to be turn seven if I'm not mistaken or turn eight then we've got turn nine both corners have very high curbs on the exit so you really need to watch out there because that is usually where a lot of guys are crashing going onto the curb uh spinning into the is spinning into the wall because they are going onto that curb putting too much uh trouble on the gas and that is really something you don't want to do coming through sector two heading into sector three you've got that chicane hard braking zone uh, a lot of guys tend to make it move up the inside, which there's no room for it. Energy Dan just comes across the line to put himself right behind his teammate, only one tenth away from Mindful Was, putting himself in P6 at the moment. Um, but as I said, you know, you don't want to touch the curbs anywhere here in Zandvoort. Maybe coming through Sector 1 a little bit, uh, through, sector, uh, through Turn 3 or Turn 4, but it also depends on whether you're feeling comfortable on those curbs. If you've got your suspension high, if you've got your suspension low, Usually you do want a low suspension here in Zandvoort, or maybe a little bit high. I have actually no idea. I'm no setup expert. Um, but it is what it is. MCFC once again with a top 10 result. Although still four more drivers with three possible uh, pole sitters. Uh, sitting at the back currently on that lap. Utkars coming around the last corner to put a good time on the board. Hopefully he's going to start his qualifying lap at the moment. And I'll tell you a little bit of, of where I do see a lot of guys making a move. So here in turn one, 
Uh, you've got a lot of runaway room around the outside, so I do tend to see a couple of guys making a move here through turn three. Uh, surprisingly enough, a lot of moves happen through there too, and then here around the outside, uh, if you take the outside line coming through that part of the track, you will have a better exit because the, uh, the banked corner is a little bit higher and it's uh, a little bit faster coming out of that corner because you will have more straight line speed. Uh, here, this is not a very common overtaking opportunity because uh, it's such a fast corner. It's such a difficult corner to make the overtake in. Uh, this is also a very risky one. Here was the curbs I was talking about on the exit. Then we've got turn 10. Uh, I don't think you have enough... Uh, turn 11, my apologies. I don't think you have enough speed coming through turn 10 to make the overtake in turn 11. Uh, it'll all have to happen here because the guys will have DRS coming this part of the track. And then we've got, of course, uh, that, uh, that corner I was talking about, turn 13, where a lot of guys make the move down the inside. I wouldn't suggest it. It's uh, too... Yo, 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 speed for... Hey, wait! You're, you're <laughs> it looks like I'm talking to myself right now. You're on the Speed Force Racing YouTube channel. Uh, that's lovely, mate. Um, so yeah, turn 13, making the move down the inside. Not very suggested because it can definitely give you some front wing damage, uh, which is obviously not ideal. Uh, let's go back to the, the, to the bottom as uh, Cassidy has gone for another lap. I think he's up on his time. Well, he hasn't set a time yet, but up on the other guy's time because he set the second fastest, uh, the fastest second sector at the moment. Come on, Keeves fan club. Once again, a Keeves fan club. And he is on the on the Speed Force Racing League YouTube channel. So I think this might be a little bit of favorism uh, from the person who is uh, <laughs> on the Speed Force Racing League YouTube. And there we go. 19.3. Oh, oh, my bad. I forgot to log out. Ah, no worries, mate. No worries. I think uh, Martin? Is it Martin? I'm not sure. So Cassidy, as I said, you know, he's got the qualifying pace of Calvin Racing and he's got the consistency of uh, Mindful Wasp. So I'm, I'm putting him as my race winner, although I feel like he sometimes chooses some very interesting qual uh, strategies. Oliver coming across the line, only 500 away from Cassidy's time. So I'm not sure if there is enough time to come to the pits again. There is indeed and come out again. Uh, there's still seven more minutes in this qualifying session. So no worries for Mr. Oliver at the moment. Let's go on board with Utkar, who so is currently in B8. And he's coming back into the pits. We might want to have our eyes on uh, Alex Hawk, who was up there with the top guys, with the middle guys. Uh, it's me, but yeah, yeah, yeah I, I know, Martin. <laughs> oh, and a door and five second, uh, five grid place penalty. He was currently in P10. Not sure what happened there, as I think he uh, impeded someone, but I'm not sure if that was actually correct. Uh, Martin, do you know if we have a lobby restart if there is an undeserved, well, an, un, uh, an unfair Five, grace, uh, five, five place grid penalty. Do you know, Martin? I don't know. I don't know, actually. Uh, the Vicar, one of those guys who is, you know, he, he, he finds some pace over the last couple of races. He he might be up there with the midfield, with MCFC, with Alex Hawk. He's currently only in P17. He's been battling with his teammate quite heavily last week. Uh, Priben will be on podium with, uh, today, according to Mur Apple. Uh, Priben currently in P6, and he's got a very good, a very good... I mean, qualifying, but does that qualifying turn into a good race? That could be the question, because uh, when you put, when, when you're not expected to be a good qualifier, and you put yourself in the top, for example, if Prey put himself usually around P15, and he put himself in P6 right now, that put, puts an insane amount of pressure on your shoulders. Because here's the thing, you think oh man i'm p6 in the qualifying i'm gonna do good in the race you put a lot of pressure well i have to do good in the race because I, I i've done such a good qualifying session and you know it puts a lot of pressure on their shoulders so usually they tend to mess up in their first good qualifying session i haven't seen prep anywhere near the top five he's currently in p7 still in the pits but he might be able to improve a little bit more alex hawk who just came across the line to put himself in p5 not a bad result and as I said, the V-Car battling with the top 15, currently in P13. As I, once again, the, the grid is so close. Look at that. Uh, Shaggy with a 19.9. And then we've got P9 having a 9.8. Uh, so only one tenth of a difference between those two. Well, two tenths actually, because uh, Shaggy is a 19.9. Uh, nine. And then, I mean, yeah, doesn't matter too much. <laughs> Ooh, Mindful was putting another good qualifying lap on the board. A P3 for the AlphaTauri driver. We might want to go on board with Calvin. He's not on a fast one. Matt G might be on one. But I think he just put himself in P6 coming across the line. I don't think he'll go for another one. He's up on his time by three tenths. Uh, down on his time. Down or up? Down on his time by three tenths. So it won't be an improvement for the Ferrari driver during this lap. Now, Doran coming across the line with a surprising P4. 
And Keeves has been pushed back by his teammate. We might want to go on board with Keeves. He's letting everyone go through at the moment. I don't think anyone behind him uh, was identical time with Oliver. Yes, indeed. 19.359. And a boat drivers will need to improve. Uh, well, I mean, Oliver doesn't necessarily need to improve if Mindful Wasp doesn't improve. But if Mindful Wasp does improve, uh, Oliver will need to improve a little bit more. Uh, I mean, the times are the same, so... It isn't necessarily fair that Mindful Wasp is currently in P3 and Oliver is in P2 while they have the same time. But it could be those milliseconds that matter, you know. For example, if, if Oliver put a 193591 and Mindful Wasp had put a 193594, for example. Obviously, Oliver is going to be ahead of Mindful Wasp. Uh, Mindful Wasp has just come into the pits. He, he put himself... Well, he just came across the line. There's three more minutes on the board. Calvin Paul, Cassidy B2, and a Red Bull 1-2. That is not something that I would... Uh, I mean... I mean... I mean... You know, it could be. could be. You know, Calvin Racing coming around Sector 2 at the moment. He's got that qualifying pace. I do have to say that. But I... I, I it might be a poll for... I mean, a poll 1-2 for Red Bull. But I don't think the race results will, will reflect on that. Because I, I feel like... Calvin Racing, he's got a lot of pace. He's up by 500s. Would put him somewhere around... I mean, would have, would have put him in the same place. But maybe he can improve a little bit more here coming through Sector 3. But I feel like Calvin's Racing pace has not been there. He's, he's making mistakes. He's, he's spinning out. Uh, for example, Austin, where he was having a good race and then spin out, for example. Uh, Mexico, I think the same. And puts himself in P2. Did improve a lot of time coming through Sector 3. Uh, about one and a half tenths, which put him... Oh, only one tenth in front of uh, one thousandth in front of Keeves. Look at that, and only five, uh, six thousandths in front of Oliver and Mindful was. But what a crazy qualifying this is! And this is what Zandford is all about. You need to have that one lap pace, and you need to bring that one lap pace into the race. Lap in, lap out. Um, a very technical circuit too. No, it, it reminds me a little bit of a of a fast Monaco. I would say a fast Monaco. Monaco, you know, it's a very tight track. Not a lot of overtaking opportunities. Not many walls, though, which is the opposite from Monaco. But I feel like Monaco is also a very technical one where you get a lot of time off your time because you're not necessarily experienced but know how to take the corners. You have tracks like uh, Belgium or uh, Brazil where you can take multiple lines coming through a corner, uh, which, which if you take the tr lines right according to your knowledge, you're going to be faster. Um, but I, I don't feel like Sandford is that kind of track. You know, you've got a lot of curbs, you've got a lot of corners, you've got a lot of fast corners, uh, which you do need to take in calculation while you're doing a, your fast lap. I don't think Calvin Racing will go for another one. He's got not enough ERS left. As you might want to go on board with someone else. Oliver might be up on one. He just started disqualifying lap. As, um, I, I think Mindful Wasp has everything to lose here. He's got nothing to gain. I mean, he's got everything to gain, nothing to lose. That is what I'm saying. Because, I mean, he's, he's in P5. He's, he's got his lap tied with Oliver. So, he's, he, I mean... Oh, Oliver, not up, his, up on his time. 1.5 times slower. Um, and so, all, also up there, you know. Only 400s away from Mindful Wasp at the moment. So, it's a really tight grid up front. We've got six drivers being within three... Uh, well, uh, 900s of each other. Which is so close for six drivers. Doran also right behind him, only 1.4 tenths away from pole time. As Oliver did put the fastest second sector at the moment, but he's not going to be improving. Coming through the last part of the track, maybe he can find a little bit of time. He just needs to improve by 5,000 to get himself into the top three. Cassidy and Calvin Racing have not been able to improve anymore. Here comes Oliver coming across the line. It'll be pole time for Oliver. He finds so much time coming through sector three. A 19.2 for the Haas driver will be good for pole. What will Mindful was be doing? He's improving by 3.2. 8 tenths. He's improving by 3.8 tenths. We've got a Mercedes down the inside. Will Mindful was be improving? Coming down the line. He just needs some straight line speed. It'll be a 18.9. Mindful was is putting himself on pole for the Zandford Grand Prix.
Keefs might be up in his time. He's up in his time too, but he needs to improve a little bit more through Sector 3. A uh, very technical sector, as I said before. Ev actually, every sector is, is very technical. Uh, coming down the last couple of corners at the moment. Keefs touching the curb. He is doing that actually on the exit. Will he be improving enough to put himself anywhere near the top three? He's coming back into the pits. Is not improving by a single tenth. And that will be your qualifying over. Prep is not improving. He's 24 seconds slower than his qualifying lap. And that will be your qualifying session. Mindful was on pole position. The only one to put himself in a 1.8 as he puts a 18.9 to uh, pleasure the fans of course in the chat uh, Keefs which we have a lot of fans of in the chat currently in P5 but I do expect him to gain some positions uh, through throughout the race uh, one on Calvin Racing for example um, Cassidy as I said consistency wise he's one of the best uh, qualifying wise he's one of the best but I mean all props to Mindful was I said I said I said Calvin Racing was a better qualifier. Calvin Racing only in P4 at the moment. So I feel like Mindful Wasp is up there with the top guys, as you can see right now, putting himself in P1. Energy Dan only a P13, but I've got some information that he wasn't feeling very well coming into this uh in this race. So we're 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 probably not gonna see anything from Dan. Uh, so mindful was putting himself on pole. I think he's done some practice, if I'm being honest. Now we've got Oliver in P2 and Cassidy in P3. Uh, further, we've got Calvin Racing, Keeves, Utgars, Mansell, MCFC, Doran, and Prep in the top 10. Once again, uh, the first... Is he the first driver from uh, the Norwegian team i think they, I, I think it is and then we've got a uh, the indian driver utkars uh apart from that we only have british drivers oh we, we need to go to the bottom oh i need to delete uh i need to delete uh i need to delete my uh thomas i needed to delete my camera i didn't do that my apologies guys uh don't take my <laughs> don't uh don't take my screen for the uh attendance please as uh the, the guys take a picture of the attendance of course i just need to do something really really quickly and then we will be right back because uh, otherwise my neighbor will not be happy with me having my door open so i will be right back guys And it looks like we're having a lobby restart, guys. So I think we will just be sitting and waiting, if I'm being honest. Uh, we'll, I, I think it's because of that 5 grid place penalty from Doran. Um, he got a 5 grid, five place grid penalty. I'm not sure. It's a it's a very common glitch here in on the F1 game in general. It's just... I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It might be a glitch. It might not be a glitch. It might have been just fair. But uh, I guess the, 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 the owners or the league admins don't know that. I'm just going to have a quick look with the lobby invite. I do indeed receive a lobby invite. Oh, welcome, Smoke. How are you doing, mate? And uh, G. Richt OG. That sounds a bit German, but uh, Richt. Did you guys know that correct was... Uh, wait, wait, Richtig is correct in German. If you need any German lessons, hit me up. On the M's, I can uh, definitely not help you because I haven't succeeded my German course for three years in a row. Well, two years in a row, but I'm I'm currently on there with my third year. <laughs> I'm so awful at German. Oh, man. If there's any Germans ar uh, among us, you really got to give me lessons, mate. You really got to give me lessons. All right, so Phoebe Thomas, uh, well, that's me in the, in the, in the comments box. No idea why I said that. I think I think it's because my my name was uh, highlighted, and I was just saying those names. I, I sort kind of I was thinking, oh, do the guys have a screenshot of the? Oh, man, I'm. Oh, jeez. Okay, doesn't matter too much. Um, Netherlands. Yeah, what can I say about the Netherlands? You know, I mean, I'm not gonna say anything about the country specifically. I'm just gonna, you know. Give some facts about the track. Uh, I don't know if there's any facts. I think it's one of the shortest tracks on the calendar. Let me have a quick think. So you've got Monaco, you've got Brazil, which is also a very short one. I think it's uh, four point something. I think Zandvoort is in is in the three kilometers, but I could be wrong. Uh, is there any any other track that is very small? Monaco is one of them. Brazil, as I said already. 
Let me think. Um, Bahrain is quite big. Saudi Arabia is quite big. Uh, which track does has a lot of corners but not too many straights? Hmm. Hungary might be one of them. Hungary might be a very short track. Also a very short qualifying lap around there. I think it's around 114, 115. Um, something at the back, maybe? At the Japan is quite long. Let me have a quick look at the calendar. I've got the SFR calendar open, of course. Let me have a quick look. I have been pinged. I'm not sure what for. It uh, doesn't matter too much. Uh, calendar. All right. Oh, Spain is one of them. Austria might be the shortest one, if I'm being honest. Well, Monaco probably is, but then we've got Austria. I mean, the real F1 tracks, you know. Monaco is like a, a fancy track. Uh, so, Austria and Hungary both are very short tracks. Uh, Belgium is quite a long one. Actually, the longest one on there. It's the only one within... Seven, yeah, Austria indeed. Uh, G Rick OG. You, you, the, the, the problem is with the messages from YouTube when you send a message and I am checking a message. Well, I can see the message. There's all, always like a one minute delay. I don't know why that is. It isn't with Twitch, but it is with YouTube. So, Austria is indeed one of them. I think it's one of the shortest, uh, about four kilometers, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Zandvoort is up there. Uh, Italy is quite long. Belgium is the longest one. It's actually the only one within a seven kilometers. And I think that uh, there's two or three tracks that are ex exceeding the amount of kilometers a track can have. I think the amount of kilometers a track can have maximally is six point something. And because Belgium is seven kilometers, they wouldn't have allowed it if it were a new track. Because, you know, they, they, for example, if, if Saudi Arabia was more than six point whatever the restriction is, kilometers... It wouldn't have come onto the onto the onto the calendar, and they would have to redesign the track. But because Belgium has been there since 1950, which is one of the only tracks uh, ever since uh, the well the yo yo Oliver, how are you doing, mate? Uh, since the beginning of the Formula One, which has started in 1950, it is allowed to be on there. And I hope they're gonna keep on racing around Spa because it's the most beautiful track on the calendar, together with Brazil. And what is the number? I mean, Bahrain is kind of a beautiful one too. I mean, I like racing around Bahrain, if I'm being honest. Not a lot of people do. Oh, Great Britain is also a, obviously a good one, but yeah. Um, so let's have a quick look with the rest of the calendar. Uh, Singapore, uh, uh, difficult one. I do appreciate the fact that they changed the tunnel section. It's a quicker track now. It's a better one to, tr to race on, so I do appreciate that. Austin is quite of a good one, also a very iconic one. Uh, Bahrain, very good racing track. We usually see a lot of good sim racing around Bahrain. Uh, and then we've got Saudi Arabia, absolute horrible track that should be deleted from the calendar, if I'm being honest. Mexico, very good track, uh, although the track limits kind of mess it up. So the guys who just barely get any track limits usually win that race. Uh, the Netherlands, yeah, good track, uh, just consistency wise, uh, pace wise. Uh, there is no good overtaking opportunities around Sanford, actually. Uh, same for uh, for Monaco. We're not doing Monaco in this calendar. That is a disgrace. Why are we not doing Monaco? Martin, explain it to me, mate. Why are we not doing Monaco? Okay, then we've got Imola. Very good racing track, if I'm being honest. I think, if I remember the date quite well, it's 1986 since that first Grand Prix was uh, on the F1 calendar, but I could be wrong. Uh, China should be removed from the calendar. Absolute horrible track. Horror of a track. Uh, Qatar, very good racing track. I love that track. Um... Miami, I have mixed feelings about that track because I feel like the racing around there is very great, but I don't like to race on there. I don't think anyone races on there. I mean, I don't, I don't think anyone likes to race on there. Uh, everyone says it's too slippery. It's too, you know, it's just, it's not a good track. That is my decision. <laughs> Uh, Portimo, I find that a very good track, but not a lot of people like that track, if I'm being honest. Oh, by the way, the tracks we still have to do is Brazil, Japan, Italy... Uh, well, Imola, China, Qatar, Miami, Portimao, Las Vegas, and to end the season with on Silverstone. Uh, we have two tracks that are not on there. We've got 23 tracks in total. Which is the other one? I have no idea. Calendar subject to changes. Yeah, okay. Uh, I've got a couple of pings. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, that doesn't matter. Ah. 
What's your podium prediction? Uh, good question. Good question. Uh, I, I need to rethink real quick what the qualifying standings were. So I think it was Mindful Wasp, Cassidy. No. Mindful Wasp, Oliver, Cassidy, Calvin Racing. No, Calvin. Uh, Cassidy was in P2, wasn't he? Oliver, what position were you in? Were you P2 or P3? I couldn't quite remember. Who was P5? Oh, man. I can't. Who was P5? Oh, Keefs. Keefs was P5, of course. How can I forget about Keefs? Uh, P6 was for... Yeah, I, I, I'm lost. I know, the P I know the top five. The rest, I don't know. I know that. Oh, no, I don't know. I was going to say I know the Vico was in P13, but what, that was halfway through the, through the qualifying session. That's probably not where he finished. Yeah, so you were P2. So I think... Oliver, I'm going to say... I think Mindful Wasp is going to win this race. I think Cassidy P2... And I think you are going to be B3, if I'm being honest. I, I was going to say Energy Dan, because he's very consistent. He has been up there last season too, just getting points because he was consistent. This uh, I mean, this season the same with two, two top three positions already. Uh, but you are also very, very fast. You sometimes make mistakes as Netherlands is a very, you know, mistake a penalty for mistake uh, kind of track as I'm just going to have a quick listen on the live stream to see if the quality is alright uh, because I've changed the quality set I mean the, the camera settings again uh, just so that you guys uh, that, that is better for, than next week because last week was just uh, next week last week was just aw awful yeah so the quality is, is, is alright I mean you guys can understand what I'm saying which is uh, obviously what we all want. <laughs> I mean, I don't think last week's lacks last week's. How do I say this? Last week's comms was good, but the quality of the microphone was ass. Because I sound, I sounded like I was giving commentary from a, uh, what's it called? A truck, the back of a truck, uh, with like a lot of. It looks like it, it sounded like I was in a box, so. I hope this is more to your, I mean, to your liking. Isn't isn't that a phrase in English? I think it is. But yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this race. I'm really wondering who's going to win this race. I think Mindful was. He has shown, he has shown me confidence. He has shown me greatness during the qualifying session already. And I think he, if he doesn't make a mistake with strategy or just going out the curb, he will win the race. Because I feel like he's got... Uh, pace that nobody else has at the moment. Cassidy, one of those consistent guys. So I'm going to say Mindful Wasp, Cassidy, uh, Oliver, or Keefs. In P3. Um, Oliver, yeah. I mean, Oliver, you, 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 you're usually one of those guys who is great during the qualifying. Well, actually, I don't know. Sometimes you qualify in the top 5 and then you drop back to P15 and sometimes you qualify in P15 and you, you move up to P3, for example. Last week, I think the same. You had a horrible qualifying session and you moved your way up the field. Which is, I mean, in my opinion, it's more impressive to uh, qualify in P1 and win the race in P1. No, it's not more impressive. It's more impressive to qualify in P15 and finish in P5, for example, uh, than, for example, uh, qualify in P1 and win the race in P1. Of course, it's quite great, but... I feel like it's more impressive when Carlos Sainz moves all the way from P20 to P5 than it is Max Verstappen qualifying in P1 and, and winning the race at P1 because it's always the same, you know? Um, uh, Martin in the chat, gonna be a close race across the grid, close quality. Yeah, I think I think so too. And also because Sanford is not a, is not a good overtaking track, you know, you're always gonna have close racing because the guys are gonna stick to the toe of each other. They're gonna have the DRS. They're gonna make the move down the straight, and then they're gonna be stuck behind each other again um, uh, during during another lap of you know not having a, an overtake. So let's have a quick look with the strategies. Uh oh, uh oh, Oliver will probably move up the grid already quite early during this race because he's on the medium tires. He's gonna try and make those mediums work. Uh, to his advantage during the beginning of the race. We've got Mindful Wasp in P1 starting on the hearts. Then we've got 3, 4, 5 and 6 starting on the hearts. A Mansell in P7 on the mediums. Then we've got another 4 drivers on the hard tires. Another 3 drivers on the mediums. Another 3 drivers on the hearts. And then we've got a medium hard, medium for Yes, Mark and Gox. 
Uh, interesting strategy. Both the Haas drivers going on to the mediums. I think that has been discussed a little bit by both the Haas drivers. But they do need to watch out for a double stack. So that's why I usually don't suggest teams to take the same strategy. Uh, but I guess it is what it is. You know, if you, if you both want to run hard tires, who's going to who's going to be the one giving up the tire? I don't think anyone wants to uh, choose for a different strategy rather than their own strategy, right? So, mindful wasp, he's going to be in P1. I might possibly lose a position already uh, to Oliver because I think Oliver is on the inside of the track. I think of the of the corner actually. So. Mindful Wasp really needs to have a great start or he's going to get overtaken by Oliver. I'm not 100% sure what the best line is coming through turn 1. I feel like it's the outside line as you have better traction coming through turn 2 and turn 3. Uh, but then you of course need to make the overtake in turn 3 if you're not already past the car in turn 1. Uh, Cassidy on the hard tires is possibly not going to make the overtake on Oliver. And I don't think Calvin Racing will make the move on his own teammate. Cassidy being the more consistent driver. Uh, Calvin Racing... Uh, Cassidy being the most consistent driver. Calvin Racing having more, um, you know, pace. But that doesn't always show in the race. Keeves in P5. He might be up there with the top three, if I'm being honest. He might already make an attack on Calvin Racing. Then at the bottom of the grid, we've got Alex Hawk with a surprising P12. I do think he will be able to make some moves at the beginning of the race. The V-Car, one of those consistent guys who might move the grid, although he's got a couple of medium tire runners right in front of him. Uh, so Alex Hawk might be the one to look into this race. Then at the back, we've got Shaggy. We've got Five Red Lights here in Zandvoort for round 13 of season 15 here in speed force racing we've got fire fret lights on the grid in zandford and off we go uh a very good start from mindful wasp he's already taking the inside line it seems like cassidy is trying to go right the outside of oliver and he's taking the outside line and he's taking a good line already making an overtake on mindful wasp getting pushed wide onto the grid uh, onto the curb a little bit but he makes a position on oliver already during that first part of the track all over right the outside will have a better exit there goes the alpine driver that is going to be keeps out of the race not really out of the race but he did lose a broken front well i mean it did lose a, a, a wing oliver currently still mp3 lost it lost the position to cassidy and we've got utkarsh making up a position calvin racing also making up a position podium prediction uh mansell p1 uh, according to the guy in the chat uh, that is of course martin mansell in p1 calvin in p2 and p3 is going to be dot 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 i said uh mindful was p1 i said cassidy in p2 and i said oliver in p3 or keeps in p3 but he's also uh, already out of the session so i'm not gonna put him in my p3 anymore uh so actually the, the the position i mean the podium that is on right now is my podium prediction and i've never had it right so it would be great if i had my podium prediction right uh Utkars on the tail of calvin racing no it's not Utkars, it's akj on the tail of Mansell at the moment. Mansell who does have the medium tire. So will probably not be overtaken. As it seems like Cassidy is trying to push. Oh and he takes out Mindful Wasp. There goes Mindful Wasp. A good qualifying for the AlphaTauri. But gets uh, well spun out by the Red Bull. Now Calvin Racing making the overtake around the outside of Oliver. Here he goes. Side by side coming through the second part of the track. Will he be making the overtake down the inside? He goes and he almost crashes out. Oliver right there has to watch out. Getting overtaken by the Williams driver. Now the other Williams driver trying to make the overtake. MCFC on the tail of Oliver. The V-car getting a five second time penalty I think. Or was it a three second? Already three drivers. Two drivers actually with a time penalty. Here comes MCFC on the tail of Oliver. I think Oliver is a little bit impatient at the moment trying to search lines that he shouldn't search and here comes mcfc down the inside and this is one of those corners which i said don't make a move through that part of the track because it could deliver you a broken front wing and there goes my prediction as uh, mindful wasp has dropped back to p15 so i'm probably not gonna win my prediction there's no way he catches up to cassidy at the moment cassidy is taking a little bit of a gap to his teammate now Oliver is finding himself in P5. Let's have a quick look with the position changes. As we've got quite a few position changes already. Mansell dropped all the way to P18, which I kind of missed. Uh, Keeves dropping back to P20. And Mindful was dropping back to P15. Uh, so definitely some very big names dropping all the way to the back of the grid. We might want to go on board with Gox, who has already gained six positions. So not a bad result from the McLaren driver at the moment. Making the overtake on the Alfa Romeo driver. It looked like it, but uh, he backs out of it again as both the Alfa Romeo drivers are back behind each other as Mindful Wasp is trying to make the overtake on Gox at the moment is he going to look for it down the inside would definitely not advise to make a move down the inside here 
as it seems like Dorian is making the overtake on Mad G currently up into P6. Mindful West with a good exit could possibly give him a good exit coming through this part of the track and he's lagging a little bit here. I think he has some internet connection issues and that might be why Cassidy has taken him out. Here comes Mindful Wasp down the inside. Is he going to go for it? Yes, indeed he does. Pushes the McLaren driver a little bit wide, a little bit of a wheel tap, but nothing too severe. Let's go back to the front of the grid. Energy that might be up for a couple of positions. Gained five already as he finds himself on the tail of the Ferrari driver at the moment. Down the straight they go. Utkars with the fastest slap. He's currently in P3. And uh, we were just looking at Mad G making the overtake down the straight. DRS was enabled already as we're heading into lap 4 out of the 36. And Energy Dan trying to make the overtake. And this is that turn 3 overtake which I was talking about. A very risky one, but if you leave enough space for the guy down the inside, it will, it will definitely be a good overtaking spot. Energy Dan already moved up 6 positions, gaining 1 on a Doran in P8. Um, AKG right behind his teammate we've got a red bull williams battle here for the top three and potentially the race win calvin racing now gets overtaken by his teammate i think cassidy is just letting him go through down the inside he goes utkars making the overtake around the outside is he gonna make it work don't think so he's a, he has a good exit though but he's not gonna be able to take that position cassidy might be given the order to hold up a boat williams drivers utkars getting past his teammate at the moment i think ekg He's trying to make the overtake somewhere around that turn 13. Oliver has dropped three positions since starting on the medium tires. So maybe the medium tires are not very great to start on. Uh, neither did Mansley. Start, also started on the medium tires. Didn't do very great either during this start of the race. As both Red Bull drivers are just going to be right behind each other. And I think that switch of positions might have been for the better. As Calvin Racing obviously has a little bit more pace than Cassidy. Which we've seen throughout the race Cassidy with a good qualifying pace um, also Calvin Racing I feel like these two are uh, quite equal to each other if I'm being honest you know Cassidy has taken the upper hand last couple of races but during the beginning of the season he has been up there uh, with with I mean with the top guys P1 getting consistent P1 in qualifying I'm talking about Calvin Racing here and so we might want to go on board with Utkars as he's gonna have the DRS down the straight coming around that last corner turn 16 as it seems like Cassidy is going a little bit too deep into that corner, but that might be because he wants some good straight line speed to possibly make the overtake on his teammate. He chooses the inside line, but he backs out of it again. Utkar is coming through turn 13 and 14. And you really need to be careful with the throttle input here because you can easily spin out coming through that U-turn. Coming through a turn of 15 and 16 goes a little bit too deep. I think he wants to be... You know what the problem is in Sanford too? You've got a lot of dirty air. And because you're racing so close to each other, you're never going to be able to make a corner uh, the way you want to take it. As Cassidy now gets the overtake on his own teammate, Calvin Racing might try to make the overtake again with a little bit of a deep uh, line from Cassidy. He doesn't go for it, as it will be a very heavy battle for the top five. Mad G gained five positions, but went all the way from P15, uh, P11, my apologies, to P6 at the moment, gaining five positions. Energy Dan gaining six positions. And then we've got Tashkar and MP9 gaining five positions too. Not a bad result. Manso is finding his way through the grid, making the overtake on Gaz at the moment, all the way in P17. Let's go on board with Oliver as uh, he's the one to look at at the moment. His medium tires might possibly still be better than the hard tires. Uh, I'm not sure when the crossover point is possibly around a lap. I would say lap 12, lap 13, and then the hards are starting to be a little bit better than the medium tires. So what is Utgars going to be able to do? Because he's finding himself in a very difficult spot. Both Red Bull drivers, very experienced, very great. Uh, they're always going to switch positions. You know, Cassidy now being in the lead of the race. Calvin Racing is going to have the DRS down the straight. And Calvin Racing just needs to make sure that he's not going to bring Utkars past his own teammate. Now MCFC is trying to make the inside line a move. It doesn't gonna, isn't going to work. Energy Dan getting past the Ferrari driver though. Maggi did not have the DRS coming down the straight. And he will have to yield from that overtake. I mean from that defense of course. Uh, but as I said, you know, the Red Bulls are just going to switch positions. Lap in, lap out. And that is a lovely thing to see about the Red Bull team. They're really uh, playing into each other. They're, they, they know what they have to do coming through. Um, sector 1, Sector 2, Sector 3. Don't be too close to each other, uh, but also don't drop out of that one a second. And that is how they're get, possibly going to get a 1-2 here in uh, Zandvoort. So the guys here in the in the, in the the comments box have actually done a very good prediction. Mansell in P1 according to... Um, 
to Martin. Mansell only in P16, so he did drop a little bit of positions. But uh, according to Smitty, he thought there was going to be a P1, P2, a Red Bull 1-2. And uh, it's it's definitely looking like that at the moment. We've got a little bit of a crash and a little bit of, of a gap between Gox and Mindful Wasp. Mindful Wasp is actually finding his way through the grid. We might want to go on board with Mr. Alphatari, who's already in P11. So he's going to be scoring some points for the Alphatari team already uh, as he's finding himself on the tail of Alex Hogg. But I think it might be his connection issues that caused him to spin out, unfortunately. Because, of course, you don't know what to expect when a driver is lagging like crazy he's, he's lying all over the field like we've seen before i mean before earlier in this race but drivers are just just need to be more careful with with mindful wasp knowing that he he lags a little bit every now and then in this race mansell up into p13 around the outside gox tried to make the move down the inside well the defense but uh, it did not work into his advantage here comes shaggy as it seems like Gox has got no ERS left in the tank. So this will be possibly an easy move for Go uh, for Shaggy. And maybe if Mansell can pull away from uh, the McLaren driver. And one, uh, how, what happened to Dan? I'm not 100% sure. We didn't have a quick look at that. Might have been. Did he make a pit stop already? Uh, he made no pit stop yet. So it is indeed a crash. Or, I mean, I know he, d he is not feeling well. Because uh, he's a little bit hungover. <laughs> Dad. Uh, he's a little bit hangover but uh that might be the reason he might not be fully concentrated i'm not sure uh the top field four is currently running away from the rest of the great oliver who couldn't keep up with the pace of mcfc so i think this is the crossover point from the mediums to the hard tires uh, the hard tires might be faster as you can see oliver being on the medium tires he's losing time to mcfc but also mad g is catching up to the house driver at the moment as we've got a 1, 2, 3, 4 being both Red Bull and William drivers. We might want to go back to the back of the grid. A shaggy on the tail of Gox. Cars we've covered in dirty been in somewhere. That, that could possibly be too. Thank, thanks, uh, Smoke. Let's have a quick look. It is indeed filled with dirt. It might have been grass. I think it might have been an incident. Uh, let's have a quick look how many positions she's uh, dropped. Only five, which is... Uh, I'm not going to say it's not surprising, but... You know, you never know during this race. I thought Mindful Wasp was going to win this race and he got uh, crashed out. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say got crashed out because I'm not sure if Cassidy actually crashed him out. But according to uh, Martin in the chat, Dan went off track in a Sector 2 and then um, he got collected. He got crashed out, unfortunately. We've got a little bit of a position switch here. Well, it looked like a position switch, but Cassidy is still in the lead of the race at the moment. We've got a few overtakes here. Alex Hawk around the outside of prep. I think both drivers are uh, Norwegian, so I think they might be working together with each other. And let's go back to Gox, who's finding himself in a difficult spot. Uh, right behind Shaggy, who is uh, quite of a fast driver, and he's got the V-car you know, on the hard tires right behind him. And I'm not sure if uh, Gox is on the mediums. It did look like it. So I think these hard tires of the V-Car are a little bit faster than the mediums of Gox at this point during the race. Mad G making the overtake on Oliver. Let's go on board there. We've got a very heavy battle. Dorn right the outside of Oliver. It seems like Oliver is still taking the inside line. Will Dorn have a better exit? The RS wide open for Dorn. It might be a move down the inside. Here comes Dorn into turn 13 and he makes up that position. Although Oliver breaks really, really late. Dorn backs out of the move and Oliver still in a B6 here in this race. Uh, Tashkern is patiently waiting for those two to make a mistake. And what is MKFG? Oh, MKFG. That's, that's something new. MKFG. That, that is. That is actually. That sounds actually. That doesn't sound so bad. Here comes Dorn making the overtake on Oliver again. He yielded. And now Tashkern trying to make the move with the arrest. Dorn is not giving up though. He's getting overtaken by Oliver again. Down the inside to go. Oliver will make this position. He will indeed. If you have the outside line coming through turn three, you will 100%, well, 99% make that move. Uh, only if, if, if you're a little bit scared coming through turn three side by side. We saw Energy Dan do it earlier uh, where he made the overtake around the outside and made up that position too. And um, yeah, it's, it's just a good overtaking opportunity. You wouldn't say it's a good overtaking opportunity because it's so tight to each other. Uh, I mean that the cars have to drive to each uh, to each other, but it's just a beautiful one. You can take a lot of curb. Well, 
a little bit of curb. Down the inside, you can take a little bit of curb around the outside. And if you just go through that part of the track with, I mean, a little bit of bravery, you will definitely make it out of there uh, side by side. Then, of course, the inside line coming out of the corner uh, has a little bit of an advantage. So, yeah, good good overtake from Walliver. Um, is is not giving up here during this race. He wants to catch up back to that top five. He'll be on the kind of faster tire later during the race. Depends on how far he's taking these mediums. And uh, Doran trying to make the overtake around the outside. Did not have enough pace. He's trying to make the outside line right now. And as you can see here, a lot of a lot of a lot of curb to be taken through that part of the track. So, oh, Oliver doesn't have any ERS left. That is definitely something to look into. As uh, these guys are still driving right behind each other, I think it'll be it'll be the, the the survival of the fittest. If I'm being honest, you know, the guy who is gonna spin out last is gonna win this race, or make a mistake last is gonna win this race. Because, for example, if Calvin Racing makes a mistake right now, they're dropping out of the one second of Cassidy, and and the Williams and the Red Bull are gonna be battling with each other. Cassidy runs away. Cassidy wins the race. Uh, if, if Cassidy makes a mistake, he's going to drop behind Calvin, possibly behind Utkars, possibly behind MCFC. He's going to try and get move his way back up into the top two. And he's going to keep up the Williams drivers, will, which will make Calvin Racing run away. Calvin Racing drops out of the one second and he wins the race. Uh, the same for the Williams drivers, the same for, you know, anyone else on the grid, basically. But I don't think that anyone that is not in the top four will win this race. Only if there is a huge crash in the top four will where all four drivers will be involved uh during that crash but i don't see that happen quite you don't see that happen quite often anywhere like in any league racing usually when you're in the top four you're quite you you want to make the overtake but you're also not taking a lot of risk because you're scoring three um th third position points anyway uh like Utgars is right now he needs those points for the driver's championship you know it's just something you need to take care of off as a racing driver do, do you want to get that that very special race win or do you want to to secure points for your team already both williams drivers are probably have never probably have probably never scored this many points in one race for the team so the question is do you want to score as many points as possible or do you want to secure as many points as possible there there's a difference there uh, Keeves trying to make the overtake on a Mark Curti around the outside. Oh, this is not a good overtaking opportunity, but it does it anyway. Money, who watches this? I'm not sure what you mean, Quinny, but uh, thank you for watching, mate. Appreciate it. Here comes Mark Curti getting overtaken by behind. Energy Dan dropped another couple of positions. Maggi coming into pits. Did he go on to the medium tires? He is going on to the medium tires quite early in this race already. Still 22 laps to go. And we do have to do a lot of races in Zandvoort. Uh, laps around Zandvoort, unfortunately. I don't quite like the track too much. Um, but, yeah, I think there's there's way many more tracks that are more nice than this one. But you can see it's a, it's a very interesting race. Because the top four is quite close to each other. Nobody is able to pull away. Cassidy is kind of leaving a gap. Uh, seven tens at the moment to Calvin Racing. Well, it's the other way around. Calvin Racing is leaving a gap. Utkar's trying to push past Calvin Racing. But I think Cassidy, if he had the pace, I don't think he would have put it away. So I think we, we can measure where Cassidy has enough pace or not. Because from the moment that Cassidy pulls away from his teammate, uh, Calvin Racing is going attack, to get attacked from behind because of the DRS. Uh, now Calvin Racing will have the DRS lap in, lap out. And that is keeping the, the Williams drivers both behind him. Uh, while if I think... Well, if, if Cassidy pulls away from his teammate, I don't think he'll be able to keep those positions. Doran up a position around the outside. And now we're going to see Doran around the outside. Will he make the same move like Oliver did? And he does indeed. That's the inside line right now. And it's not an easy move for Oliver. But he's still sticking around the outside. We'll have a better exit. What will Oliver be doing? Going a little bit onto the grass. Make sure they don't touch wheels. Because through this part of the track, you definitely don't want to touch wheels. Here comes Tashkaran trying to get involved down the inside. He goes Doran with a little bit of an awkward line. As both drivers right in front of Tashkaran do not have a single ERS left in the tank. So this will be possibly an advantage for Tashkaran. Because he still has a lot of ERS in the tank. Will it be a top 5 position for Tashkaran? Might possibly be. 
He's got fresher tires than Oliver at the moment. He's got better tires than Oliver at the moment. And he will have the, uh, the, the, the faster tire than Oliver at the end of the race. So I think Oliver will definitely drop a few positions because he will be on the slower tire at the end of the race. Uh, you do, you do, Quinny, welcome. No idea. No idea what you guys mean, but uh, I mean, that's probably my uh, foreigner brain that, that doesn't catch the English phrases too well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Shaggy making the overtake on Wiggles. Oh, Wiggles trying to go right the outside. Here comes Wiggles making the overtake again. Shaggy not giving up though. He's going down the inside. Not a good overtake opportunity. And Wiggles takes a P12 again from Shaggy. He might want to go back to the front of the grid. Energy Dan now with fast slap. Energy Dan surprising 112.1. And that will possibly be the fast slap of this race. Unless we have a late safety car. We haven't seen too many safety cars yet. I don't think anyone has actually crashed in the wall or anything. Um, no severe damage. We saw one driver coming into the pits. I think that was Mansell. He's already climbed his way up into P11. And we've got Mindful, mindful was we haven't. Uh, put too much time on the screen from yet. That is no English, but um, five tenths now for the Alphatari driver on the tail of Tashkern. And Tashkern obviously has a good race uh, during his battles with Oliver and Adorn. But I think I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make any any bold statements. But I think these three drivers in front of Mindful Wasp might want to leave some space for Mindful Wasp. And I feel I'm going to say that because I feel like that Mindful Wasp has enough pace to catch back up to the top four. Um, the reason for that is look at where Mindful Wasp came from. Look at where he is right now. Only six to seven seconds behind the top four. If the top four will start battling with each other, Mindful Wasp will definitely catch up. And maybe with a little bit of, a, of, a, of an undercut, he might cut off a couple of seconds from that time maybe i'm not sure so he really needs to get past these guys as soon as possible by not battling too heavy maybe down the straight he's on the tail of the mercedes driver as you can see dr is wide open but it will not be good enough to make the overtake on tashkar tashkar who possibly has a lot of straight line speed as you can see pulls a little bit away from a mindful wasp there as they're coming through the last part of the track sector three very technical one you don't want to touch the curb on the exit here coming through turn 15 because you're just going to be shot through the air. I mean, into the wall there. Uh, Mindful was not very close to Tashkern, so it will possibly not be an overtake on opportunity. Although it is. Tashkern coming into the pits already. He was on those medium tires. And Mindful was now has dropped out of the one second of uh, Dorn and Oliver. As I do think that Oliver will have to come into the pits pretty soon. Dorn will possibly bring Calvin Racing with him to the top five again. Uh, top four, my apologies, Oliver, who's going to come into the pits pretty soon. Lap 18 out of the 36, so that means the crossover point, well, that we have raced 50% of the time on the medium tires. And I didn't think that the medium tires were going to last that long, if I'm being honest. Maybe Oliver will try to go for a medium soft strategy, although I see that very unlikely. And this was what I was saying. This was what I was saying. Uh, you don't want to touch that curb on the exit there as he's going a little bit too deep through that part of the track. He touched the curb on the exit and he got shot through. You could see he was glitching a little bit going onto the curb. And then he took the outside line um, off track. And, and unfortunately, he got overtaken by Prep again. Lost a bit of time to Doran. And also to Prep, of course. 1.1, 1.3 seconds. And now he's getting attacked from behind by Mansell. Mansell is on those 17 lap old mediums. Will have to come into the pits uh, pretty soon. Both Calvin Racing and Utkarsh coming into the pits. A little bit of team play here from both the drivers. Prep crashed out of the race. Coming into the last part of the track. Goes back onto the, onto the racing line as uh, he's going to drop back all the way to P13. Possibly has to come back into the pits. Where are these guys ending up in? Oh, this is not great being behind the Ferrari and the Mercedes driver. They will have their hands full with those guys. And I think Utkars. Ooh, Calvin Racing is in front of Matt G. That is good news for the Red Bull driver. And ooh, Mr. Wiggles will make it very difficult for them. Mr. Wiggles will make it very difficult for them. Uh, Shaggy too, though. Shaggy is a very, very good very defensive driver so i do i do think he will be able to do very great here uh, tashkern making the overtake on prep prep of course being on those older tires which which tashkern will have no problems dealing with 
And uh, here comes Calvin Racing. He will have the DRS, but I don't think it will be an easy move for the Red Bull driver. He's on the fresher mediums, though. I think Maggi also on the fresh mediums. Five lap old mediums. He's already coming to the pit, so he kind of made a an undercut work. Finds himself in a good position. He will possibly be hoping... Oh, and a five-second time penalty for Cassidy. Speeding in the pit lane. Very big penalty for the Red Bull driver, which will definitely put him down a couple of positions. So it will be a top three position for the Williams. Uh, as of right now, here comes Calvin Racing. DRS wide open. A shaggy coming into the pits. Uh, Mr. Wiggles is not giving up yet. Oh, here comes Calvin Racing, making a deep dive bomb, almost crashing out the Alfa Romeo, but just enough time. Cassidy finds himself, oh, 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 this is, oh, no way. Calvin Racing getting crashed out by Mr. Wiggles, and now Mr. Wiggles retires from the session, and we've got a virtual, no full safety car, actually, a uh, very chaotic uh, pit, pit exit, and we had so many people heading into, sector, uh, into turn three, it was chaos. It was chaos, it was chaos. So Mansell will actually be in a good position. He will be able to come into the pits. All the guys will have to slow down a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, Mindful Wasp already came into the pits. I think he would have gained a couple of positions if he didn't have uh, come into the pits yet. So yeah, virtual safety car. Uh, no, full safety car. 60 more laps to go, so... Will the guys be going on... Well, a lot of guys have come into the pits already. MCFC dropping behind his teammate. Didn't really get undercutted by his teammate or Calvin Racing. And everyone will sort themselves behind the safety car again. So I think Mansell will only lose about five positions maybe. Whereas he was all the way at the back of the grid during the beginning of this race. I mean, not completely during the beginning. But during, during lap 10, I think... Uh, Mansell coming into the pits right now, as it seems like everyone is catching up quite quickly. Uh, Mansell was actually 9 seconds ahead, and I don't think... Wait, he will drop so many positions. What is happening? I thought he would have... Why are the guys all going so fast? I, I don't think they're, they're allowed to catch up to the safety car yet, are they? That is strange. He drops back to P8, goes on to the soft tires. 15 laps on the softs. Does that work? I don't think it works. I don't think it works. He will definitely be struggling. Medium tires were definitely better. He will be faster at the end of the race. He will be possibly faster because those soft tires heat up quite quickly here around Sanford. A very fast track and a very a lot of fast corners. And usually when you've got a lot of fast corners, your tire will your tires will overheat quite quickly. Um because they've got no time to cool down. You've only got one straight to cool down your tires on and that is the start finish straight um, and of course that little straight which guys are coming through right now but I don't think that gives you enough time to cool down your tires uh, sector one is a very tire consumable track a very tire overheating probability uh, part of the track you know you've got um, sector twos uh, also if I'm being honest you've got a lot of uh, right handers a lot of fast right handers and then you've got that U-turn heading into Sector 3. Uh, sector 3, yeah, it, it is, it, it's not a good idea going onto the soft tires. And we might possibly be seeing Mansell spinning out of the race just because his tires were overheating. Um, that is something you have to take in mind being a racing driver. Do you want to uh, choose tires? Matt G coming into the pits right now. He's on 7 lap old mediums. Will drop so many positions because everyone has caught up again. I think he will drop behind Cassidy, who's coming to the pits because he had a broken front wing. Cassidy on the medium tires. A very unfortunate incident for Cassidy, if I'm being honest. He was just caught up in a lot of traffic and nothing he could have done. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure who's in the wrong there. Mindful West will definitely be, be thinking, you know, karma is a bitch. But, uh, oh, I can't, say, I can't swear on the live stream. My apologies, guys. My apologies. Uh, I'm just gonna blow my nose real quick, guys, so I will be right back with you. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, no, I am gonna blow my nose. I was just looking at something in my camera. I'm seeing a black wall there, but it's my, it's my, uh, closet. So I'm, yeah, doesn't matter, actually. <laughs>
Thanks for letting me know, uh, Smoke. I wasn't, I wasn't completely sure. Uh, I wasn't completely sure if I'm being honest. I mean, yeah, yeah, they will work. They will make it. But I'm just scared about the tire overheating. That is the only thing I'm scared of. Because Zandvoort, you have a lot of tire overheating issues. Also, being on the medium tires, which is why we possibly saw uh, Mansell crash during the beginning of the race. So... Do they make it to 15 laps? Yeah, okay. 15 laps, that's about 40% uh, of the race. Do they make it, though? I think you would have been able to go from medium to softs then. And I'm wondering why nobody is doing that then. I mean, of course, you will have a safety car, which will kind of save you. And you're already two laps behind the safety car three, probably. So those tires are not worn out that heavily it's tricky at times but you can you can make it okay fair enough if you're keeping your tires on the right temperature of course thank you by the way smoke appreciate it look i'm being friendly <laughs> good smoke i mean good for me i mean um saying thank you which i usually don't do very often when i'm talking I should do it more, saying thank you to people. I should do it more. Um, I am assuming the safety car is coming in this lap. We still have 33% of the race to be driven. Well, a little bit more than 33, probably 35. <laughs> I know why you're laughing, Smoke. I know why you're laughing. I know why you're laughing. Nah, we good, we good, we good. Uh, so, green flags pretty soon. And we will be starting the race with Calvin Racing, who... <laughs> I didn't put in my top three. What a sad day this is to be commentating on. Nobody in the top three is, is, was on my top three. <laughs> that, that is so sad. Keeves in P16. We've got Mindful Wasp in P9. All of our in P5. Nobody is going to be my top three. Oh, Jesus. All right, coming around the last corner. Here comes Calvin Racing. And we have got a pretty good race start. He went, went out very, very late. Uh, and usually that causes a bit of chaos here around Sanford as I think Oliver is on the tail. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Is he going to make a dive bomb? I think he is. He's finding a gap down the inside. Makes the overtake side by side. Coming through sector one. Will it be the Mercedes driver gaining a position? Doesn't look like it. Oliver takes the position from Tashkern. Beautifully done by the Haas driver. You might want to go on board with Mansell here. He's got that hungry Alphatari on his tail. But Mansell being on the soft tires, of course, is going to give him a big advantage coming through these first laps of that safety car restart. He's finding himself behind Alex Hawk, who's on six lap old hearts. And the strategy will be... Oh, Wheels has left the session. Oh, yeah, he crashed out, of course. He, he crashed out <laughs> laps ago. That is why there was a safety car, of course. I mean, Wiggles, I'm not laughing with you crashing out, by the way. I was just laughing with the fact that I forgot you were crashing out. Uh, mindful Wasp, here he comes. Ah, it's not going to be an opportunity, and the DRS will also not be enabled yet. Oliver, who once again loses a bit of time to the top three. And I want to say something. I'm going to be totally honest about, to you about something. MCFC was in the midfield, rather in the, in the, in the rear field. During the beginning of the season, and look where he is right now, a battling with his own teammate for P2 and a possible race win as he's shoving it down the inside, but he's gonna let his teammate run away again. Uh, Ferrari driver coming into the pits, and Maggi is possibly gonna retire from the race. And Tashkern uh, trying to catch up to Oliver, but it's not easy with Mansell on your tail. Mansell has made the overtake on Alex Hawk. Here comes Doran trying to make the overtake on a mindful wasp. Mindful Wasp is finding himself in a little bit of traffic. He's got the pace, but unfortunately, there's not many overtaking opportunities here around Sanford. So he can get an easy pass through some part of the tracks, uh, maybe through turn 10. If he got. Oh, here he comes down the inside. Beautiful overtake there for Mindful Wasp. Takes the curb. And now the uh, Aston Martin is getting overtaken by the Alpine driver, too. Around the outside, he goes. Energy Dan trying to benefit. <gasps> Utkarsh. Utkarsh is out of the race. Well, not out of the race, but out of the out of the battle for pole position. I mean, not pole position. What am I saying, mate? I'm just too excited. 
making the overtake uh, is uh, Keeves while well, trying to make the overtake. And now we've got Prep dropping back to P17. No way. This was the pressure I was talking. <gasps> MCFC dropped back to P11. Also Cassidy to P10. What is happening? Oh, well, Cassidy was already in the midfield. Uh, oh, this, is this will just be easy for Calvin Racing then. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. If he is the one who's gonna crash out now, Calvin Racing, I really have to start a bingo card. Because I didn't... I mean... I'm probably not gonna take part on that bingo card because nothing that has happened today was on my bingo card. Utkarsh crashing out. MCFC crashing out. Uh, Mindful Wasp crashing out, who's already caught up to play P5. I don't want to say much, but he's done a great job at the moment already. P5 on seven level medium so he will possibly take those till the end of the race is on the tail of Utkarsh uh, not Utkarsh Tashkern and uh, Mansell on the soft tires he's dropped all the way to the back of the grid and I think that um, Mr. Mr. Martin in the chat predicted that Mansell was going to win the race Kevin in P2 it looks like both Haas drivers are doing their best trying to catch up to Kevin Racing. But, uh, you know, MCFC crashing out, Utkarsh crashing out, Mansell crashing out, Mindful was crashing out, Keith crashing out. Uh, all those guys crashing out. We've, we had a, uh, a safety car situation because of a very interesting situation. Five cars within one tenth of each other uh, coming out of the pit lane. It was just a crazy race already. And we still have nine more laps to be driven. Cassidy now making the overtake on gas. Uh, possibly not with the DRS again. Is the DRS enabled already? I'm not 100% sure yet. Utgar's trying to make the overtake down the inside. He goes here coming through turn 10. And he's... Oh, yes! Oh, and both the Williams drivers crashing out each other again. MCFC. And I think they've done that before. MCFC now weaving all over the place. Letting his teammate know, you know what you've done, mate. You, you're, you're messing some things up, mate. Um, so MCFC is now taking the lead of that little group here. Uh, between himself and Utgarsh and then um, Madge getting the fastest lap trying to get that one extra point for the Ferrari team and Mindful Wasp now trying to get past Teshkern and he will be able to with the DRS down the straight oh he's already going for it he's already going for it into turn 13 are they making it out alive it does seem like it around the outside goes Mindful Wasp has a little bit of wheel tapping with the Mercedes driver, but nothing too serious. Beautifully done from Mindful Wasp right there on the curb. He goes, and he will have a DRS coming through that bankered corner into uh, lap 28 out of 36. And they're catching up to Calvin Racing. So it might once again be a good prediction for Mr. Martin. Uh, but I mean, of course, the prediction has been done because, uh, because of a wild guess. Because nobody would have thought that Mindful Wasp, MCFC and Utgarsh was gonna, were going to crash. And Mansell neither. Um, Mansell has come back all the way from the back of the grid. At some point he was in P19, P18, P20. I can't even remember. But he was having such a bad race during the beginning of the race. And has caught back up. Mindful Wasp drops back to the back of the grid. Currently in P4. Uh, being on pole for this race, dropping back because of a crash with Cassidy, uh, climbing back up, a little bit lucky with the safety car, but I mean, look at some, you're looking at some great racing from the Speed Force Racing crew. Um, they, they're doing a great job, they're really, you know, Keeves a little bit unlucky, I, I don't think he, he had enough to, pace to get back into the top five, Cassidy neither, I think his crash was a little bit too late during the race to catch back up to the top five. Um, but we're definitely looking at a great race. Look at where the energy Dan is. He's finding himself in P6, which we didn't, which we didn't even think at, at at halfway past the race because people were asking, what what has happened to energy Dan? Did he crash out? And look at where he's at right now. Eight lap old medium tires will definitely bring him to the end of the race. Uh, so we might want to go on board with Mansell here. It'll be a three way battle. Mansell now trying to make the overtake. Oh no, he does indeed make the overtake on the soft tires. I think Oliver will just let his teammate go through. And now he will try and, uh, well, hold up Mindful Wasp for as long as possible. Beautiful team play again from the Haas team. And Mansell now has to catch up to Cassidy. He's got the tire advantage. Not anymore, I think. I don't think Mansell has the tire advantage anymore. I think he's he has to let Oliver go through because Oliver has more pace on the hard tires during this stage of the race. Uh, the hard tires, 10 level hards are definitely better than 8 level softs, if I'm being honest. Uh, and also than 10 level medium. So 
Haas playing the team game. Yes, indeed, but I don't think it's the right team play. Because as you can see, Mansell not gaining any time. They were within one second going into... Uh, did he have the DRS? Does he have the DRS? I don't think he has the DRS. No, he doesn't have the DRS, but he did catch up to the DRS again. Uh, but as I said, I don't think they played the right team game. They were within one second coming into Sector 3. They were dropping out of the one second coming into Sector 1. Uh, well, into Sector, into sector 1. Uh, but I feel like... He's caught up. He's caught up. Look at that. Within seven tenths of the Red Bull driver at the moment. So it will be a couple of feisty laps. Uh, those softs are still good. You think so? I, I could agree. I could agree. Nine level softs. Yeah. Good shot. They're, they're, I feel like it's, it's a crossover point at this point during the race. Because otherwise, why would you never go for, for a medium soft strategy if the softs last that long anyway? That is my question. I mean, it's not anything towards you, Smoke, by the way. It's just my question as if... Why are people, go people going for a medium hard when the softs are lasting more than 15 laps? And if they're still fast enough after 10 laps, you could just come into the pits, go into the soft tires, and then switch over to the hard tires. I don't know, there's many opportunities here. Mansell, Mansell on the tail of the Red Bull driver. Around the outside he goes. DRS wide open and he makes the overtake. Will it be overtake done? It will indeed be overtake done. Gavin Racing not giving up, but Mansell making the overtake up into the lead. Martin, you surprise me every day, mate. Martin, you surprise me every day. If this is, if this is going to be the finish lineup, you might be a, a genie. A genie. You are the genie of SFR. Look at that. And mindful was might still be up there. Mindful was might still be up there. But then, of course, Oliver needs to do his job and keeping up that AlphaTauri for as long as possible. Calvin Racing and Mansell will lose enough time battling with each other. And that gives a great opportunity for Mindful Wasp to run away with that race win. Uh, my P2 and my P3 are definitely not going to be on the podium anymore. Well, Oliver might be up there. I think I've got, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get two people right, I think, on the podium, of course. Although Mindful Wasp is going to be bad, I don't know. Calvin Racing was not up there, and neither was Mansell. Uh, tire wear for some people is a bad, but Mansell is good with the tires. That is correct. Oh, and another virtual safety car. Someone has crashed out. Who has caused that virtual safety car? Uh, doesn't look like anything severe. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, what is he doing? No. No, what is he doing? Mindful Wasp. What are you doing? Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. What a horror strategy. This was the horror strategy I was talking about. Mindful was going on to the softs in P14. Oh, no. Oh, Jesus. I'm angry. I'm really, I'm really frustrated at the moment. What is he doing? He was in a good position. Those softs from Mansell were going to run out. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. This is horror. Oh, what has he done? Oh, no way. I am angry. Mansell, I know you're listening to this live stream. I'm so angry at you. This was the strategy mistake that I said that Mansell was, uh, that uh, Mindful Wasp was going to make. He is always making these interesting tire strategies. Four more laps to go. He's going on to the soft tires, but he finds himself more than 15 seconds behind the top three. There's no way he, no way he will ever catch up with the amount of people right in front of him. He needs to... He needs to... No. No. I disagree. I disagree. It'll be a battle for P3 here between the Red Bull and both the Haas as well. It will not be a battle for P3. It will be a battle for the race. Energy Dam moves up a position to Alex Hawks. Well, Philip mediums. And these mediums have been very beneficial for Energy Dan. He's the one bringing points for the AlphaTauri team right now. Mindful was moving up a position. Might want to go on board with him. Gains that position on Kaz. Another yellow flag. Who is going to crash out? That is a Ferrari. That might have been Kaz. It is not going to be Kaz. I think it isn't. It is indeed going to be Kaz. Three more laps to go after this one. And the battle for the race win is still ongoing. Mansell on 12 Lippold softs. Calvin Racing on 14 Lippold mediums. And Oliver on 14 Lippold hearts. Whose tires will be the best during that last lap battle? Who will play the DRS game the smartest? And who has enough ERS in the tank? Uh, 
to be continued. Do -do 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 -do. No, <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. We're heading into lap 34 out of the 36. Coming around the last corner. Here comes Cal uh, Oliver. Has to drain all of the ERS to keep up with Calvin Racing and Mansell. Uh, Calvin Racing still has a lot of ERS saved. He is really a... I, f I feel like he's he's one of those guys who is really able to bring a lot of pace on the track without using too much ERS. Mansell doesn't have too much anymore in the tank. Uh, Mansell possibly finds himself in a difficult position. His tires are not running. Uh, they are running out. They're still good enough. He still has the pace. But I think Calvin Racing is now just waiting for that last lap. That last DRS opportunity for Calvin Racing heading into lap 36 uh, will definitely do him great. And then Oliver is just going to battle with Mansell for the race uh, for P2, I think. Uh, I don't think it matters too much who's going to get P2 and who's going to get P3. Uh, but I think it will be Mansell running away. I think Oliver is definitely the team player who's, who's, who's giving that position for, I mean, for free is, is I mean, a bad saying. But he, he's really a team player and he's really going to offer those positions to Mansell. Also, I think Mansell is higher up the driver's championship list. Oh, there goes Prep, and I think he had a collision with Mansell. He did indeed have a collision with Mansell, and Mansell is just gonna... Uh, Mansell, mindful was my apologies. And he has a broken front wing. Is he gonna spin into the wall? He's not gonna spin into the wall, but might possibly retire in the pit lane. Yeah, that's just frustrating. Let's go back to the last lap of the race. Well, second last lap. Oh, they're going side by side through sector two. And once again, the Haas driver on the outside line coming through turn three has the inside line coming through turn four and takes the position from Mansell uh, from, from Calvin Racing again. So good overtake from Cal, uh, from Mansell uh, playing some good mind games. And here he goes around the outside. Calvin Racing tried to make the overtake down the inside. Mindful was not getting a five second time penalty and he will retire in the pit lane. Unfortunately, bad strategy, uh, bad race in general. Uh, yet he did have a good comeback race. Sorry for saying uh, you had a bad race, by the way, man. So apologies. Sometimes people get frustrated when I say that. Uh, here comes Calvin Racing into the last lap of the race. Oliver had to give up, drops back 1.7 seconds. So that does mean these mediums and these softs are still fast enough. Who will win the race? Will it be Calvin Racing? Will it be Mansell? Calvin Racing still has a lot of ERS in the tank and he will drain everything coming through that main straight. DRS wide open and Mansell has used every ERS he's got in the tank. Calvin Racing around the outside he goes. Outside landing to turn one is possibly the best one to choose. Um, but he, he doesn't actually have to choose because uh, he can go uh, back onto the racing line because Mansell di uh, did not have the opportunity to go side by side through turn one. And he's now trying to catch up Mansell in P2. 15 lap old softs. Are these softs dead or are they not dead? A yellow flag in sector one. That is possibly Keeves who has crashed out after an incident with Alex Hawk, possibly. Mansell. Oh, I think Calvin Racing is also out of ERS. Both these drivers out of ERS and it's just the survival of the, of the fittest. As I said, drivers are crashing out. Drivers are making mistakes and into the last sector they go. Sector 3 for Mansell, Sector 3 for Calvin Racing. Oliver drops back all the way to P, uh, P3. I mean, three seconds behind these two. And I don't think Mansell will have the opportunity to make the overtake. He cannot make the overtake through there. He should have had a better exit coming through turn 11. And now coming through the last part of the track. Calvin Racing is going to be your race winner. He has to cover two more corners into the banker corner. Turn 16. And that will be race done for Calvin Racing. A good race by the Red Bull driver Mansell. Only one tenth behind Calvin Racing. But it couldn't be for the Haas driver. He had, he had a good comeback race. I do have to give him that. All the way from the back of the grid. Coming back to get a P2. He is my driver of the day. We had some very close battles here. We might want to see Prep making the overtake on MCFC. I don't think he is up there. Matt G making the overtake on, him, uh, on Mark Querty. Mindful Wasp unfortunately has left the session out of anger. Uh, I do I do understand that. He feels angry. He got overtaken. Ooh, Utgars leaving the session. Oh yeah, that's... Uh, by the way, that is because he left the session already. So he's going to be in P15. But uh, Mindful Wasp, as I said, he, he, he can be frustrated with himself. Qualifying in P1. Uh, got crashed out or crashed out himself because of lag. I don't know, because of Cassidy. Drops back to the back of the race. Catches back up to P4. Virtual safety car comes into the pits. Four more laps to be driven. And drops back to P14. Is definitely not something you were hoping for. I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure what he was thinking. Maybe he thought it was a full safety car. 
which in that case would give him an advantage because he would have been very close to the top four uh, but now he just lost 15 maybe 10 seconds to the top four and he dropped back to p14 lost 10 positions during that during that pit stop so very unfortunate for mindful was for the rest of the race we had a very great race we had a good battle we had a couple of crashes unfortunately from the top guys gavin racing runs away with your race win he proves he proves me wrong uh i i didn't put him in my top three he said you know thomas i gotta do something about that i'm gonna prove you wrong i'm gonna get the race win and indeed he did a mass p2 a good race unfortunately he crashed out at the beginning of the race call back up oliver with a consistent race you know as i said sometimes he's one of those guys who qualifies really bad uh moves up a lot of positions sometimes he qualifies really good drops down many positions today it was a race where he qualified really good and he finished the race really good he qualified in p2 uh, finished the race in p3 only lost one position i need to remove my camera before the guys are uh, there we go uh cassidy in p5 good race dropped two positions but nothing too severe uh, he dropped back many many positions due to an incident with uh, mr wiggles and we've got energy dan in p6 and uh alex hawk in p7 we need to be fast let's go all the way to the back of the grid unfortunately we had two dnfs being a mindful was by mr wiggles utkarsh takes p15 we did not see many penalties here tonight in zanford but that shouldn't matter too much uh thank you very much martin appreciate it as uh well i'm gonna i'm gonna finish the live stream here guys i would like to thank you very much for watching uh i hope i've uh, enjoyed enjoyed i mean how do you say that uh, i hope i've entertained you enough and i hope to see you guys again i'm not sure if i'm gonna be there next week i don't think i will be there next week but i'll let you guys know maybe uh smitty can take over from me uh for a week or two uh it all the, it all depends on on whether i will be able to or not guys thank you very much for watching the live stream my name is phoebe thomas make sure to check out my socials if you haven't already and i will see you guys next week or the week after or the week after uh because i'm going on vacation and uh you know i'm gonna look for the sun which is probably not there i'm going for croatia um so maybe the sun will be there you never know i'll let you guys know if you want to know you know doesn't matter guys very inter very interesting race make sure to check out the full race here on the speed force racing league youtube channel if you're currently in the live stream and you haven't seen much of the race make sure to replay the race and it was definitely worth it we saw very many crashes uh and we saw many many overtakes so guys thank you very much my name is Sweet thomas and peace out bye bye